of Dear Piggy's Python Tutorials. We are so excited to have you back this week and in this video we are going to be learning about dictionaries. So dictionaries are another data type. We've learned about lists, we learned about sets, and now it's time for dictionaries. And dictionaries are used quite a bit in Python and dictionaries are also very similar to many other data types that we learn in other programming languages. So besides Python, I know there are things like arrays in JavaScript, which are quite similar to dictionaries in Python. So either way, learning about dictionaries in Python will be good for all sorts of languages. So let's kind of get into what dictionaries are first. Dictionaries, dictionaries are ordered, changeable, and indexed. Now, we use curly braces for dictionaries, just like sets. However, the biggest difference between sets and dictionaries are that dictionaries have keys and values, whereas sets and lists have items. And that's going to be a very, very big deal because as we'll see later on in our video, dictionaries are going to be quite more complicated and have a lot more information than lists and sets do. So let's go into REPLit here and create our first dictionary. So open a new tab, go to repl.it, our in-browser ID here, click on the blue start coding button, and then choose your language Python. We're going to create our REPL. So as I mentioned earlier, dictionaries have keys and values, right? So keys are going to come first, values are going to become second. Um, and how I like to think about value, keys and values are that one of them, keys, is more like a generic topic, a broad topic, and values are more specific. So you can think of it as something very general, very broad, and then a very specific tiny detail so that you would have keys and values. So let's come over here and create our dictionaries. First, we have to give our dictionary a name. Right, guys? So we can give our dictionary the name. What should we give it? We can give it um, our favorites. And we can set it equal to, now we use curly braces for dictionaries. So curly braces, and then we click enter. So formatting is quite important when we use dictionaries as well because we want to make it easier to read and we want to really differentiate the different keys and value pairs. So once we do our curly braces, instead of putting all everything on one line, which is going to be really hard to read, guys, we're going to put it, we're going to enter, and then you'll see that REPL automatically tabs in for us, which is great. And then this here, we'll put our first key, and then we have a colon, and then we'll put our value. We separate every key and value pair with a comma. We say key, we can give it a value, key. Oh, I spelled that wrong. And we can give it a value. Now, I'm only going to add three for now. But as you can see, my last key and value pair doesn't have a comma because there's nothing that comes after it. Uh, you only need a comma if there's something that comes after it. So these commas are important, just like they separate items. They also separate keys and values. Now, these colons are kind of telling you this is where we transition from the key to the value. This is one key and value pair. Dictionaries can have as many key and value pairs as you would like. And the way I formatted this is to make it on, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six lines, but everything is very clear and easy to read. We can easily tell what is our key and what is our value. Now, I said previously that keys are like general broad topics, and I should have a comma there, grammar guys, broad topics, whereas Values are more specific details. So those are important to remember when we are thinking about our keys and values. Lots of people, when they are doing this for the first time, they get our keys and values messed up. Just remember that your key is always your first value, first um, item here, and then your value will always be your second. So we can come in, let's see, what do we really like to do? Um, we can have sport. We can do uh, food. Ooh, that's a good one. I have plenty to say on that one. We can do TV show. 
All right, so now that we have our keys filled out, um, notice that they're all broad topics. There are many, many sports that we can choose from. And in my case, um, I love to play lacrosse or soccer. I'll put two because um, more people play soccer. Football, it's an international sport. Um, Food-wise, let's see here. Okay, we have so many things to choose from. Dumplings, noodles, ramen, um, pizza. I love pizza. Um, what else? Ice cream, donuts. Oh, hold on. I'm getting a little carried away now, guys. <laughs> Let's just stick with one for now. Let's go donuts. I'm actually kind of craving donuts right now. Oh, donuts right now sounds so good. <laughs> and then my favorite TV show is Friends. Cannot live without Friends, guys. If you haven't watched Friends, you need to watch it. Okay, so now we have our first dictionary. We used it, we wrote it using curly braces. We separate all the key and value pairs using a comma. And we use colons as well to separate the key and the value. And everything is in quotation marks unless you're uh, writing something that's not a string. So this is a dictionary. We can print it out our favorites and we get just exactly like it is. This is exactly what it looks like. So now we've learned how to create our own dictionary. Pretty cool, right? This is very different. And again, the most important thing to remember is that dictionaries have keys and values. Sets and lists have items. So many people also say that they also have colons as well. So I'll add that in so that you don't forget. But these are the biggest differences between dictionaries, sets, and lists. So now, once we have our dictionary, say I want to change my favorite food. Let's say I got donuts today, so I'm a happy person. And so now I'm craving, what am I craving? Pasta. Ooh, pasta. Specifically ravioli, but I'm not sure I can spell that. <laughs> so we can try that. So this is where we're going to get into the next part of our dictionaries video. We are going to work on changing changing, if I can spell that, changing values in our dictionary. So what we're going to do for that is we're basically going to set in your dictionary name, you're going to give it a dictionary name. So we're going to give it a dictionary name. And then inside of the brackets, so we're using brackets now, guys. And in quotation marks, we're going to give it the key name that we want to change. And then we set it equal to the new value. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to say our favorites because that is our dictionary name. We're going to say change the, we want to change donuts to ravioli. So we're going to have to change the value of the key food. So we're going to say food. So change the key food and change the new value to ravioli. Hey, I think I spelled that right, guys. Um, ravioli is a pasta. In my opinion, it's like tiny, small dumplings that are filled with sometimes cheese, uh, things like that. So if you're ever wondering what ravioli is, it's delicious, by the way. So now we have our dictionary name no longer has the value of donuts for the key food. It now has the value ravioli for food. We can print that out and see what the change is. So print our favorite. Um, after this print, I'm going to print an empty line so that we kind of see a change. But this empty line isn't going to change anything in our code. We run our code and we see now that instead of our food being donuts here, we get food is ravioli. I prefer to have both, but, you know, we can only choose one right now. So food is now donuts here and food is ravioli over here. So we have successfully changed the uh, key from the value of the key food from ravioli to donuts. So now the next step is to add values into our dictionary. So adding values to, oh, I can't spell the day, guys. Adding values to our dictionary. Let's just pretend I spelled that right. Okay, so how we're going to do that is it's going to be almost the exact same as how we change values. And then we're going to kind of give a summary later in a second. 
but we'll see soon that we're going to do this exact same thing except food in this case is an already existing key. When we want to add a new key and value, I should say key and value. When we want to add a new key and value, we're just going to give it a key that doesn't exist and set it equal to a value. So we're going to say our favorites. And what's another topic that we should do? Let's think. Um, okay. Let's do dessert. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm a little caught up on food today. <laughs> kind of talking about my mood a bit. But we're going to set it equal to, I really like ice cream mochi. If you haven't tried it, you should. It's delicious. All right. So when we print out our new list let's this is the original we'll separate it with the line with the empty line and then we'll print out our list again so now we'll let's run our code and we see originally we had sport lacrosse soccer food ravioli tv show friends and then over here we have the exact same thing except at the end of our dictionary guys we have added dessert is ice cream mochi so let's kind of make a generalization here. When we're changing or adding values in our dictionary, we do essentially the exact same thing. However, if this key that you put in of the in the brackets, if it doesn't exist in the dictionary, it's going to add it in as a new key. However, if this key does exist in this case, food does exist, then it's just going to look at the value and change it to the new one that you set it to. So essentially changing and adding keys and values into our dictionary is the same format, right? So now we've learned how to uh, create a dictionary. We've learned how to add values and keys to our dictionary. We've learned how to change values and keys in our dictionary. Now, last part, we are going to learn how to use the items method to print out the dictionary so that everything looks nice and pretty. I don't know if you mind or not, but in my opinion, this doesn't look very nice. Everything is squeezed onto essentially one line and it's in these curly braces and it's just not very pretty. So in order to achieve that, we are going to use our items method and a for loop. So we can come over here and take a look. And I wanted to mention to you guys, this picture where it says, a uh, knight is equal to curly braces, gal of the pure, robin the brave. This is a dictionary as well. It's a dictionary with two key and value pairs. However, it can be very much mistaken as a set if you don't look carefully, which is why it is always great, great practice to put your dictionary on separate lines like this. Every key and every value is on a separate line. That way, much easier to read. Nobody's going to mistake it for a set. And in general, easier on our eyes, right? So that was just an example of you can put it on one line if you want to. Now let's take a look at this for loop over here. In our previous tutorials, we learned about using one instance. We would say for x in list name, print x. And so now it's the same thing, except we're going to give it two things. We're going to say for kv, for key or value in nights dot items parentheses. So kv is just essentially saying take and it doesn't have to be KV, it could be XY, it could be AB. It's just saying take every key and every value as a separate instance and print it out. However, it is very important that we use our items dot items function over here, guys. Because without this dot items function, it's not going to work. And we're, let, let's take a look at that in a second. But first, let's go in and run our code. I am going to print another line out, an empty line, and I'm going to say, now we are going to print dictionary out using for loop and dot items method. All right, so now let's go ahead and do that. Let's say for key value in our favorites because that's the dictionary name dot items and now guys please 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 be careful that you do not forget the s in dot items if you just do dot item with no s it's not going to work your code is going to break so then we're going to put a colon here don't forget the colon either 
we're going to say print out your key and your value on the same line. Now let's take a look at our for loop here. It's essentially taking every key and every value as an instance and printing it back out. And this dot items method, while it looks like it isn't doing anything, we can take it out and run our code and it's not going to work. And one more thing to remember that this can be K and V. We can call this whatever we want. These two names are up to us as long as we keep these two constant. So these two, this must be the same as this. All right, so now let's run our, run our code and take a look. So instead of ugly, squeezed into one line um, dictionary, we now have nicely formatted every key value pair on a different line. This is nice looking, easier to read, easier on our eyes, right? So now this was an example when we use the dot items method. If we get rid of dot items though, take a look, we run our code, it's going to give us an error. And this error is, it says too many values to unpack, but basically what it's saying is, I don't get it. Um, your dictionary is confusing me. I don't know what to print. Because if we can do this in our list and set, a dictionary is very different from a list and set. So naturally, we need to add the items method in order for it to print out correctly. So we run our code, and now it's as good as new. So guys, that is basically the items method, and we've covered dictionaries as well. So dictionaries are different from sets and lists uh, because they have keys and values. We use curly braces and colons and commas in dictionaries. Keys are generic and broad. Values are specific um, details. You add keys and values to a dictionary by doing this format with the brackets. If that key already exists, it's going to change the value. If the key does not exist, it's going to add in that key and the value. And the items method is used in a for loop so that we can print all of our keys and values out nicely and pretty. So that was our dictionaries video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it and understand it. We will see you in the next one for lambda functions. So we'll see you then. Bye, guys.